issue. Let's hope, that kid doesn't, let's hope this kid doesn't grow up to be, uh, to be a uh, lawbreaker because if he goes to another country and starts fighting against this country, he's going to have, uh, he's gonna have some uh, tough laws to abide by. Yeah, uh, let's hope uh, none of point. Allison's children are ever terrorists. Of course, <laughs> back, in June, the, back in June, the Supreme Court uh, told the federal government, hey, look, Congress is going to have to figure out what sort of rights these detainees down at Gitmo have. And so yesterday, in a huge victory for the White House and also a number of Republican maverick senators, they came together on a detainee bill. Now, uh, to give you a little pro and con here, both sides, with Cornyn and Leahy. America is conferring rights upon them that we don't have to confer but we are because we believe there ought to be a fair process and we ought to be consistent with our Constitution and with the decisions of the United States Supreme Court. But the last thing I would think any of us would want to do would be to tie the hands of our soldiers to permit terrorists to sue the U.S. troops in federal court uh, at will. Now is not the time to abandon American values and to shiver and quake like we're a weak country and we have to rely on secrecy and torture. We're too great a nation for that. Those are the ways of weak, those are the ways of repression and oppression. All right, well, despite this uh, heated debate and Senator Patrick Leahy's impassioned uh, plea there, the bill did pass 65 to 34. Twelve Democrats crossed party lines to vote for the bill, and one Republican sort of switched party lines, and that was Senator Lincoln Chafee to vote against the bill. It's shocker. Uh, also, uh, the, here, here's what a lot of people say. The people that go to law school, they say, I, we shouldn't have passed it like this, including one Republican senator said we should have done this right, and essentially they look at uh, the bylaws in there. They say these detainees can't challenge their detention uh, in, uh, to a judge, and they say that is against uh, the constitutional rights that they should be having, so they might have to do this whole thing again. So, yeah, there is, that's what the Democrats say. This is going to wind up back in the Supreme Court. In the meantime, what it does do is it creates military commissions to figure out what sort of uh, punishment to be meted out. Also, it uh, gives the president the ability to figure out what interrogation techniques should be used. Right now, the only thing that is clearly defined as torture is watching Wolf Blitzer. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, the, the one thing I would add to this is I understand. You remember when uh, Zacharias Massawi said, okay, I'd like to uh, talk to Khalid Sheikh Mohammed Ramzi Ben Al Sheed because I'm representing myself. I don't they're gonna limit. That. Uh, they're going to limit the chances the detainees have to represent themselves. They're going to have to use a military defense lawyer because when Khalid Sheikh Mohammed wants to look at our, uh, our private intelligence that, that got him arrested, we realize that could work against us in the war on terror, so there are some limits there. So Senator McCain's happy. Senator Lindsey Graham is happy. Uh, Senator Warner's happy, and the president's happy, and he should be getting this legislation to sign over the weekend. Wunderbar. Okay, so are you guys happy? And who do you think could better protect you from terrorism? Which party? Now, some of these polls fluctuate. We have a new Fox News poll out just now. And first, let's start with who do you blame for yeah. failure to get Osama bin Laden? Which right. party are you blaming? Because you know that President Clinton says that he did all that he can in this latest interview with Chris Wallace. Okay, 32% of you blame the Bush administration. 22% blame the Clinton administration. 21 say there's enough blame to go all around. Mm -hmm. And 17 of you are just forgiving and say nobody's to blame. Just look at how much that Chris Wallace uh, dust up with, with uh, Bill Clinton over the past weekend has impacted the national dialogue. Also, uh, another question was, who, uh, the question was, who would keep you safe, would uh, the country be safer from terrorism if Republicans win the midterms? Well, 36% of you say, yes, the Republicans would keep you safer. Meanwhile, 27% think that the Democrats would keep you safer. So what about you? Can you do a better job than the, uh, the congressional candidates you have representing yourself right now? That is the subject of the other Fox News Opinion Dynamics poll, and I imagine they're, uh, we're just going to choose three to look at this. The average person in the street could do a better job than most current members of Congress. Well, the answer, if you're listening on satellite radio, is, well, 36% agree uh, the average person can, but 58% disagree that the better person is representing you in Capitol. And that's what's, what's so interesting about that is you know, Congress always gets such abysmal approval ratings. They're at like 25%, I mean, an all-time low, yet the general public says, but we couldn't do any better. Well, maybe really that just says they don't confident. want the job. Because it's a, it's a job these days where everybody's yelling at you and you're yelling at each other. In fact, it is so big.